Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today is going to be part two of my video series on what it really costs to set up and run a hobbyist level CNC machine. So in part one, we ran through a number of different categories covering the cost of the machine, the controller, the spindle, and some of the bits that you can get. So here in part two, we are going to dig into some of the other categories, six and total and then we are going to wrap it up with the total cost of what you could potentially expect it'll cost you to stand up a hobbyist level cnc machine all right let's go ahead and get into the first category So the next category I would like to cover is an actual interesting category to me, and that is the one of waste boards. So once again, like the spindles, some machines come with a waste board and some do not. The Onefinity, for example, does not come with a waste board, which does open up a whole host of possibilities. But for a new user, it can be very intimidating and a little bit daunting to establish the waste board and build something with your machine that you have just purchased. So. So let's go ahead and start on the low end and talk about the options for a waste board for something like Onefinity that doesn't come with one and then work our way up. So on the low end, you can start with just a simple sheet of MDF. You do not need to create something more complicated. Putting your machine on the MDF and attaching your work holding to this MDF is perfectly fine. The only caveat that I would say with that is that if you do cut into your waste board, you do want something sacrificial that can be replaced. So would not recommend putting your machine directly on the desktop. Instead, just get a solid piece of MDF or whatever material you are comfortable with and put it on your machine and use that as your waste system. It is very straightforward. You can nail into it, you can screw into it, and you don't have to worry about destroying your desktop. And so that comes in for around $48 here in the US, at least in my area anyway, and it's very economical and it's super easy to do. So in the middle of the scale, you can create a wasteboard system that is broken up like mine, where I am going to put some T-tracks in this center here. So I am thinking about doing an upcoming video on creating a wasteboard for the Onefinity. So if you are interested in that, please leave your comments down below so that I know that that might be of something that folks might be interested in having a video for. So a system like this is not much more expensive than the actual uh, just straight MDF piece as well. The only difference is, is there are some hold downs and you do have the additional cost of the T-Tracks, which can get very expensive depending on where you buy them from. So based on my calculations, a system like this is going to cost around $176 or so, depending on the type of T-Tracks you get and the different hold down mechanisms. Once again, this is all in the spreadsheet, so you can take a look there for the specific setup that I have here. So at the top end of the wasteboard system, I would say is probably something like the QCW holder that I had in a previous video, which I will link above and below. So the QCW system takes away the need for you to figure out how to build a wasteboard system yourself. It is all pre-built and it has foot holders for the Onefinity, which makes it super easy to assemble. However, it is a little bit of expensive. So uh, it is on the upper end of what I would consider for a wasteboard system short of going all aluminum which you can do but then you still need something that is sacrificial because you don't want to cut into that aluminum so right now on the onefinity website the qcw system is 380 dollars which is a pretty good deal for something that you don't have to build and you don't have to design yourself To make all the CNC magic happen, you will need some sort of computer to do your design work on, do all the CAD and CAM work. And so this is a view of my office that I don't think I've ever shown before. But uh, on the low end of the computer systems, I do think that you can get a laptop in the six or $700 range that will allow you to do basic CAD work and basic CAM work without too much of a problem. Now, stepping up to kind of that middle tier, you can get something like a MacBook Pro or so. Uh, the new ones are relatively inexpensive and very powerful. And so they come in around $1,700, $1,800 
$1,500 or so today here in 2021. Or you can go sort of all in and get yourself a gaming laptop or gaming computer. And that price ranges anywhere from $2,500 all the way on up. And that's an investment that is a long-term investment, but it is an additional cost that you have to factor in to owning your machine. The next area I would like to cover is the software for your CNC, and this is very much a hotly debated topic uh, in the hobbyist and even in the professional CNC range because there is a wide range of software that you can choose each having their own purpose. Some of them are form and fit for what you're trying to do, and some of them are more generic, so they struggle for some of these specific tasks. So what I'm gonna do is kind of talk about the lowest end, as I've been doing for the rest of the video, and then work my way up to some really professional end software that you can choose to invest in if you want to. So let's go ahead and start with the lowest end, which is actually free. It is the only category that has something that does not cost you anything. And so both Inventables and Carbide have software that you can use to do basic CAD operations, 2.5D milling, and basic CAM operations at no additional cost. And so if you're not familiar with the 2.5D versus 3D conversation, I do have a video on that. I will link it up and I will link it down below uh, so you can kind of dig into some of the basic terminologies on CAD and CAM. So I do like both the Inventable software Easel and I do like the Carbide Create. I do like Easel better. It is web-based, however, so you must have a computer to use it. I actually have a number of uh, projects inside of Easel that I still use today. I find Carbide Create a little bit more difficult to use for the CAD operations, but for CAM it's fairly straightforward and it does produce really great G-code. So stepping up to that middle tier, there's not a lot of options there that are relatively inexpensive, but there are a handful. And so one piece of software that I have used in the past and I do recommend is Cam Bam. It comes in at $149. It is really great at the Cam operations. It is, however, a little bit complicated to use. It's a little hard to understand and get up with that terminology. Um, and it is Windows only if that matters to you. I happen to have a Mac, so it was a little bit of a deal for me. Stepping up just a little bit, you can also upgrade to Mesh Cam. It's $250, has similar features and functions of Cam Bam. Both of these are CAM only pieces of software, so you can't do any CAD in them, uh, but you can import vectors and DXFs and other formats and do the CAM from there. So it's pretty straightforward if you get yourself a vector program to create a SVG or a DXF and then you can import that into the CAM software. Now going to that high end, there is a wide range that you can dig into on the high end. So some of the most popular software for doing pure 3D milling is Vetric VCarve as well as Carve Co. So VCarve comes in a couple different forms. It comes in the desktop version, the pro version, and then the uh, what is known as Vetric Aspire, which is the upper end of their software package. So to get uh, VCarve desktop, it's going to be around $350 or so. And jumping up to that pro model, it's around $700. Now for CarveCo, they do have those three tiers. However, it is a subscription service. So you do have to pay annually for your software. And so on the low end, it is only $180. Uh, but going all the way up to the upper end to get the kind of professional version of of CarveCo, it is $3,000 a year. So if you do choose to invest in that software, buyer beware that it is an annual subscription fee and you have to pay that over and over again. Now there are other options like Fusion 360. You can use Fusion 360 for free and I do recommend that as well. And so Fusion comes in around $300, again being a subscription service, all the way up to $1,000 a year. Uh, there are things like uh, Rhino and SolidWorks, which are in that price range as well. So you do have a lot of options and it opens up a lot of doors if you want to invest in some of that higher end software. However, it will cost you a lot of extra money depending on which direction you want to go. The next area I would like to cover is dust collection. Now this is one area that is often overlooked by folks when they're setting up their CNC. However, I personally find it essential for my CNC. Now I do have my CNC in the office here and so when the door is shut and I am doing some milling operations, there can be a lot of fine particles floating around from the machine. And so I wanna make sure that they're captured and not in the air for me to breathe. 
So in my particular setup, I do have a dust collection system here with a Vortex. Uh, this system came in around $150 or so, about $100 for the shop vac and about another $50 for the Vortex system. There are less expensive models out on the market that have an integrated Vortex system that come in a few dollars less expensive, around $138 or so. Now in the middle tier range, you end up getting into what I would call woodworking dust collection systems. Uh, the mid tier comes in around about 600 CFM and a four inch hose for about $400. And then that upper tier gets you into about 1250 CFM or so, again with the four inch hose, and they're usually priced around the $700 range. So I definitely say dust collection is not an area where you should skimp if you need it. Now, if you're in a big open area, um, or if you're out in a garage or something like that, maybe dust collection is not as important but evacuating those chips is important to your cut quality they do recommend doing some sort of chip evacuation the next category i would like to discuss is the stand that you have your cnc on now in this specific case i do have my cnc on a desk that i custom built for my office it is made completely of mdf which is one of the least expensive solutions you could choose now this setup cost me about $250 US, and uh, you could do it in plywood, which would cost you maybe a little bit more, depending on the grade of the plywood you're looking for, but you would get the same outcome. Stepping up to the mid-tier, you can replace this desk with an industrial style stand that has a thick metal base and a thick wooden top, and those come in around $400, $450. They can also go much higher as well, depending on the type of stand you get. So going all in for your CNC, replacing something like this desk or augmenting this desk or stand with a full enclosure, maybe even made out of aluminum, for example, with doors that open, be very nice. I've seen a couple of those on the forums. And so those range anywhere from five all the way up to a thousand or even two thousand dollars, depending on the options that you have for the enclosure. So you really do have a lot of options, but don't forget the cost of your stand when you're building out your CNC. The last category I would like to cover is what I'm going to lovingly call miscellaneous. This is a category that has a bunch of stuff in it that you will likely find very useful, but might not consider initially while you're buying your machine. Some of them I will actually characterize as completely essential. So let's go ahead and zoom in on what I have right here in front of me, and I'll walk you through all the different parts and show you why I think they're important. The first miscellaneous item I think is absolutely essential is this eighth inch collet here. Now I did get this one from a lair. It is made specifically for the Makita router. So I think having a one eighth inch collet for your CNC is a really great idea because it does let you use those less expensive bits and those smaller diameter bits so that you can get into finer milling operations. Out of the box, the Makita router does not come with one of these eighth inch collets, but I do think they are desirable. If you do have a spindle system, you can upgrade one of the ER11 or ER20 collet systems, I do recommend maybe investing in something other than the one you get with your spindle itself because they're likely to be higher quality and just have higher precision. But I do think these smaller collets are absolutely essential for beginning in the CNC hobby. The next thing I would like to cover is the touch plate. Now this is a touch plate that I actually have from my Shape Oco way back in the day. However, it is identical to the touch plate that you can get with the Onefinity today. In fact, it is made by the same person who makes it for the Onefinity today, Charlie. He's a great guy. I've been supporting the community for a long time now. Now with this particular touch plate, you can touch it off this side and measure X and Y, or just simply use it as a Z touch probe. And so because of that, is it a little bit more expensive? Comes in around $89. You can get a less expensive touch plate, which it does Z only from Inventables for around $29. So there's a little bit of range and variance in this particular option. The next thing I would like to highlight is this gamepad. My X-Carve and my Shape Ochre did not have the ability to have one of these game controllers to control your machine, but now that I have one with my Onefinity, I really do find it incredibly helpful. It saves me so much time by not having to go back to the computer to control where my machine is as I'm adjusting something. And so this particular game control unit is provided by Onefinity. It comes in around $45. You can find it on Amazon for less money, I believe. It 
comes in at $29 or so on Amazon, but they are becoming relatively scarce. The supply seems to be a little limited. The next area I would like to highlight are your clamping solutions. Now clamping is absolutely essential to hold down your work material and it can come in lots of different varieties and lots of different forms. The most simplest form is simply using some double sided tape to hold down your work material. I have done that a lot in the past. I will caveat that saying. However, if you're doing some precision milling, sometimes a double-sided tape is not all the same thickness, so you might not get the same height of your material, depending on what type of milling operation you're doing. Another option is to use the classic blue tape method, where you lay down two pieces of blue tape, put a little super glue between them, and sandwich your material down to your wasteboard system. I do still use this method uh, quite frequently, actually, especially whenever I want to mill something where I can't have clamps in the way, so I do find it useful. Now, stepping up to a slight a higher end option is to use some of the clamping systems uh, available from Inventables or from Onefinity themselves. In fact, uh, if I remember properly, Onefinity the company got their start with the socket dust boot as well as these OOPS clamps. I do have a number of these OOPS clamps and as you can see, I've had a couple OOPS with them and they're really great because you can just take these plastic ends off and replace them and then you still have your clamp intact. Whereas something like this, if you do chew the end off, it's kind of, it's kind of just chewed off forever. But so the inventable clamping system does come in around $35. You can get oops clamps in a variety anywhere from $29, I think up to $35 or so, depending on how many you're looking for. But I do find these valuable and almost essential for the work that I do. Now, if you want to kind of step up yet another notch, you can invest in some of these T-Track clamps. I got these from Rockler. This is a low profile clamp. You can get two of these for around $15. And then these are the kind of more beefy aluminum ones. They are, I think, $12.99 each or so. Same issue with these that you have uh, with some of the other ones. If you do happen to run into one of them, for example, and take a chunk out, it's kind of permanent and it stays that way. I've actually run into this one and that one, so maybe I'm not so awesome with my clamp placements, which is why I've started gravitating to the blue tape method so I don't run into my clamps. But all of these things combined are really essential, I think, for entering into the hobby, but often overlooked uh, by people who begin, and then you know they get into the kind of hobby and they're like, well, how am I gonna hold something down? And the first thing they have to do is run out and buy some clamps. So do invest in a little bit into this. Uh, you can get some other kind of 3D printed options out on Etsy. I've actually done a couple designs myself. I haven't settled on anything that I like. Uh, if I do, maybe I will create a future video about that or post the files out on Thingiverse which is usually what I do with things like this. All right, that is the final category. So let's uh, jump over to the summary of all of the costs. All right, well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it just like part one. I'm pretty sure you weren't jotting down the cost of every individual segment. So I do have my cheat sheet here and I'm gonna rattle off the costs that I computed for the different categories and then summarize the total cost of what you could potentially expect. So starting with the wasteboard system, I computed $47.93 on the low end. In the middle tier, about $176 and on the high end, about $385. So a pretty big swing there of, you know, almost uh, an order of magnitude or so. The next category was the computer for your CNC. And again, here there is a big swing. On that low end, you can get a budget laptop for around $600. In that middle tier, you can get a really nice MacBook Pro for around $1,700. And on the upper end, there really is no upper end in this regard. But you can get a nice gaming computer or even a gaming laptop for around $2,500. That is a fairly significant investment, but you probably won't have to upgrade anytime soon. The next category is the software, and this is probably the only category that potentially you will not incur some sort of additional cost. So on the low end, your cost could potentially be zero. In that middle tier, the cost ranges anywhere from around $149 up to about $250 for some really great cam software. And on that upper end, there really is a big swing here, but generally speaking, you're coming in around $349 at that entry level, all the way up to about $3,000 if you want to go kind of all in for an annual subscription of a really great 3D carving program. 
The next category we covered was dust collection, and this ranges anywhere from $137 in that low end, about $400 in that mid-tier, and then $700 in that upper range. And that gets you a really good, robust dust collection system that you can potentially use for other things, not just for your CNC. The next to last category is the desk and or enclosure system. And so again, a lot of variants here. This is completely personal preference in my opinion. Now this desk here that I'm sitting next to is about $247 or so, completely made out of MDF. In that middle tier, uh, I would recommend maybe bumping it up to some plywood and getting some professional grade sort of stand, metal stand or something. And so that's gonna come in around $347, although there are a lot of options in this range and you can go much higher. And on that upper tier I did compute it around $500 or so to kind of go for a custom built machining workstation that has an enclosure with doors and everything potentially even made out of aluminum so that comes in around $536 or so again depending on the options and you can go much higher. The last category we covered was the miscellaneous category, and this is perhaps the most useful category that uh, most people want to have but maybe forget about. And so on that low end, it comes in around $134 or so. Middle tier comes in at $252, and that upper end tier comes in at $354. So uh, again, not too much of a swing there, but an additional added cost that you need to be aware of. So where does this bring us in for the total cost for your CNC? Well, this is interesting and I find it really kind of fascinating because I've been doing this for a while and I guess I never sat down and computed how much I've actually invested. And so now I kind of have some hard numbers. So reminding everyone that we are using the Onefinity Woodworker here, it is $1,946. And so adding up all the categories in addition to that, on the low end, we come in at $3,602, which is about $1,500 more than the cost of the machine. So that's a significant amount of money. However, on that middle tier, we jump up to uh, $5,997. And so that is a significant uplift from that lower end tier. However, it is not as high as you could potentially go. On that upper end tier, I did compute a cost of $9,138 which is almost $6,000 more than the cost of the machine itself. That is quite staggering and that is quite an investment. I do know people that have actually gone beyond that, especially if you're investing in significant software packages, a lot of variety of bits. It is really easy to go well beyond that. So those make some significant investments that you have to make uh, to really get off the ground. And much of this is what I would characterize as a hidden cost for your CNC. It's things that people really have not thought about whenever they kind of jump into the hobby and when you're buying it kind of piecemeal it probably doesn't really add up and you don't really compute the cost like I did over the years but when you sit down and kind of add it all up it is really quite significant all right, well, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was, again, it was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun to make, and I'm getting really great responses from it. Uh, so if you do like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but tell us why so we can make future videos better. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing ringing that bell, very important these days. It really helps me out for the channel and helps grow the channel. Finally, if you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired. For that low end, it comes in at $180 a year, but it is a... <clears throat> oh, my eyes are burning. All right. However, if you want to buy it, uh, it actually comes in... How much does it come in for? Fuck, I don't know. Oh, it's $400. All right. And so let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on what I have in... <clears throat> Starting with the waste bore system, on the low end, I computed about 400, 400, <laughs> not even close, all right. 